All right, y'all. So this week, I'm not talking to Brush King. I'm also not talking to Silk God. I didn't have enough time to be able to come up with a skit because this past weekend, I traveled all the way to Orlando for a conference. I was going from Friday to Sunday. I normally shoot on Sundays. That's when I get uh, a lot of my editing and shooting done for the videos. But I just wanted to come through and just say I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And with that being said, let's. Yo, what it do? It's your boy J. Lou. And you guys are just in time for something new. All right, now in today's video, what I'm going to be talking about, this is the Royalty 708. Now, when it comes to this brush, the first thing that I thought about when I started using it was flamingos. When I look at flamingos, they look exactly like this brush. As you take a look at this brush, one thing that you will notice, this brush has that signature Royalty hand paint job. And what I mean by that is it has the blended paint within it. You know what I'm saying? Now, when you look at it, of course, it definitely has the darker shades of pink as well as some lighter variations of pink. And at the same time, there's a little bit of streaks of white. Now, when you look at these bristles, that just reminds me of the beaks that are on flamingos because flamingos' bodies look just like this. But when you look at their beaks, they look just like this. You know what I'm saying? Now, when it comes to this brush, this is a seven row medium brush. I'll get into a little bit more details later in the video in regards to how it compares with the other brushes that were previously dropped. But, but, but another thing I want to highlight is I like the fact that the logo has the accent of gold. And I've noticed that a lot of the brushes have the accent of gold. I just personally like that glossy finish of gold when it comes to the logo. Now, when it comes to the brush, I already said it's a medium brush. Some of the things that you guys may want to know is how does it compare in regards to the other royalty brushes. All right, so when it comes to comparing this brush against the previously released royalties, what I'm gonna do is compare it against these three right here. As you can see, the first one is the 706. This one right here, this is the 709. This is the 708, and then this is the 704. Now, off top, when it comes to these brushes, you may have a different opinion, but at the end of the day, with my personal opinion, the royalty sky blue medium brush, this is the this is the firmest out of all of these brushes. You know what I'm saying? To me, this is the medium brush out of the pack. Now, when it gets into the 7 9, you can tell that the 709 feels like a medium but is slightly softer than the sky blue and then whenever you get into the 708 you can tell that this one feels a lot more firmer than the 704 now keep in mind the 704 is a medium soft brush and because both of these are so close to each other you may be able to say that the 708 kind of feels like a medium soft brush but that truly just depends on your hair type your density as well as your curl type in regards to your pattern as well as how long your hair is now i won't get into too much detail about all of that stuff i just mentioned but one thing that I will say is whenever you use this bad boy, this brush right here is amazing on fresh cuts. This is something that you want to be able to use on a fresh cut, depending on when you want to use it. You know what I'm saying? And then when you get into your wolfing stages, you can use this into your early wolf. But one thing that you will notice is probably when you get past three or four weeks, this brush will feel a little bit more like a medium soft. So the higher and the thicker your hair grows, you will definitely be able to tell that it won't have as, as much pull on a higher level. But on the fresh cut, this brush feels amazing. Now, I know a lot of people always be like, hey, yo, J. Lou, what's the progress looking like with your wage and everything like this so like i said i probably have at least a week or two until i really start seeing true ripples but let me show y'all what my pattern's looking like right now and then i'll get into a little bit more details a little bit later within this video all right, so as you guys can see, my hair is looking very dark and it's getting a lot thicker than it used to be. Now off top, the, the first thing I wanna point off is with the way I'm brushing my hair, I'm actually starting to see a lot more ripples form up on my right side, but more so the back. The main reason why that's happening is because the back of my hair it grows thicker at a faster rate. With everything else though, as you can see, I don't really have any ripples at the top. Still a straight hair waver, you know what I'm saying? Now I'm just playing, but I will have a video coming in the future about the truth about straight hair wavers. So y'all stay tuned. But when it comes to the looking at the rest of my head, I've been just focusing on just taking care of my hair health because at the end of the day, if you want to be an elite waver, if you want to have better looking waves, you really have to take care of your hair. Now with me, whenever I started brushing with this brush, it feels exactly like a medium. 
And what that's gonna do is, while you're brushing, a medium brush will lift up your hair just a little bit, and at the same time, it's gonna distribute the natural oil that's on your hair. Now, when you're using this brush, a lot of times, right after you get a fresh cut, the barber's gonna probably hit your head with some oil sheen or something like that, or maybe some oils that they have, or whatever. But once you start brushing with this brush, this brush is gonna help distribute that onto your hair and onto your scalp and make your waves look stupid dope. You know what I'm saying? And that's the reason why this brush, you would use this brush a lot more on a fresher cut. It just feels amazing at that level. But because this brush is a medium, you will still be able to get a lot of use out of it. Now, everybody's different. Some people like to rock low cuts. They try to get them every two, maybe four weeks or whatever. And some people like to wolf a lot. You know what I'm saying? If you're in the first group, you're definitely gonna love this brush. If you're in the latter group, you may use this brush more so at the end of your session. It's still gonna feel like a medium brush, but it'll feel more on a medium soft side. Now, with that being said, let me show y'all right quick how I'm currently brushing my pattern, just in case you guys are on this journey with me and you guys are trying to really figure out, okay, how should I brush my hair if my crown is in a similar placement as J. Lou's head? So let's get into it. All right, so when it comes to brushing my hair with this brush, like I already told you, if you ever have a line in your crown, I'll make sure I link my video right above here. This is a classic video that I did that really helps you get the line out of your crown. And whenever you're using a brush like this, if you don't have a pointed palm brush if you don't have an oval brush if you don't have a curved brush you can still use one of these brushes to be able to brush your crown and this is basically how i'm brushing my crown so i'm brushing the back straight down like this basically at a 45 degree angle but because I'm starting slightly behind where my crown starts, that's gonna create the swirling effect in my crown area. Now this angle, as I get further down into the back of my hair, what I can do is really stretch this angle out, you know what I'm saying, and just really focus on this area of my head. And whenever I brush, what I try to do is stay in the flow of how I want my waves to go. Because I want my waves to swirl this way, I'm never gonna brush this side and then go to this side and start brushing. What I'm gonna do is continue going around my head. So from brushing that angle, what I'm gonna do is just hit this angle right here. And what I'm using while I'm brushing is I'm just using the corner of this brush right here. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm using the corner on my crown area, brushing this angle for 360s. You know, a lot of guys that have beehives and things like that, they usually brush behind their ear or towards their ear. And then as I move further up, I may not go uh, all the way into my crown too, too much, but what I'll do is I'll start like somewhere right here in this area and then just brush for 360s right here. Most of you guys that have beehives as well as just regular 360s, you guys already know. Once you start moving up, you brush more towards your temple. And then I just keep following that all the way until I get to the top of my head. Now, when it comes to the top of my hair, what I do is I go back to my crown and I'll basically, I'll start a little bit behind where my crown is and as well as to the side of it. And then I'll just brush straight up like this. And as you guys can see, what that's doing is it's causing my hair to go up and it's gonna create that swirling effect that I want for my crown area. But at the same time, because I'm brushing straight to the front like this, this is allowing me to be able to brush for 360s. Now, when it comes off to finishing my left side, what I'm gonna do is start at the top of my crown, but slightly back, and then I'm just gonna brush straight towards my left side like this. All right, so hopefully that little breakdown helped you guys understand how I'm brushing my pattern with this bad boy, as well as how you may wanna brush your pattern. What I always say is your crown placement plays an important factor. Now, the last thing I wanna say about this brush is because this brush has blonde bristles, what I'll do is I'll make sure I link my review to the 706 where I go into way more detail about everything you need to know when it comes to using blonde bristles. Now, with that being said, I don't have anything else to say about this brush, but I, I know I have a lot of people that's been hitting me up on my videos and they're like, hey, yo, J. Lou, where did you get your brush holder from? You know what I'm saying? Basically, this thing that's on the wall right here. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna let J. Lou from the past be able to tell you guys exactly where I got my brush holder from as well as how much it may cost. All right, so I know a lot of people always ask me where I get my brush holder from that's on my door. All I did was simply go to Walmart. If you want to, you can check out, there's a section called the closet storage area as well as the shelf and dryer liners. I'll show you guys right quick. So once you come to this section, basically the one that I got on my door, as you guys can see, is this 24 pocket shoe organizer. All you gotta do, it comes with the racks and everything in there and basically just hang it up on your door. Now for me, I think mine costs about uh, somewhere between $5 or something like that. So that's all you gotta do if you want to buy the same brush rack that I have on my door. All right, so I just wanted to give you guys some quick little tips. Once you get this thing out the bag, what it's gonna come with are these four little hooks right here that you can hang up over your door. Now you can put this on the inside of your bathroom or you can put it on the outside of 
your bathroom. You can put it wherever you want, you know what I'm saying? I put it here mainly because this is where I spend most of my time at whenever I'm brushing my hair. Now, whenever it comes to putting your brushes in there, one thing I wanna point out is you never wanna put your brushes in there like this. The main reason why is when it comes to the bristles, a hard brush and a medium hard brush, their bristles may not get affected if you put them in there like that. But I try to keep all my brushes in this state right here because one thing that you would notice when you look at a soft brush like the OVO, you know what I'm saying? Already within it, because it's leaning to the side, the bristles are getting indented. Now just imagine if I turn this bad boy upside down just like this and I put it in there. As you guys can see, the bristles are getting deformed. You don't want your brushes to be in, in a state like this. What you want to do is always make sure you put the handle face down like that. Now, another tip that I always try to give when it comes to this brush holder is, as you guys can see, I have my curves. Sometimes whenever you run out of room, it's best to just double up and put them like this. Now, when it comes to the curves, if you run out of space, but you still have to put brushes in there, what you can do is put them back to back just like that, you know what I'm saying? With the curves, because of the way that they're made, you may not run into any issues with the bristle, the bristles being deformed. And what I try to do is I try to keep the mediums and, and, and the softs and everything like that in their own separate one. Now, another thing I want to give you guys in, a, in a, a tip is whenever it comes to the palm brushes, as you can see, what I do is I interlock the bristles between each other and that allows me to be able to put them in there because with the palm brushes, they don't have a handle. So therefore, when you drop them in there, they're going to go straight down. The bristles are going to be touching the face of the plastic. It's going to bend your bristles and everything like that. You don't want that to happen. So the way that I save my bristles is I just simply do this. If you have a lot of long handle brushes and you're concerned about leaving them just like this, what you can do is interlock them like that and just drop them in there. And that's just a, a perfect way to be able to store your brushes. You can also do that with your clubs. You can either put them back to back or you can interlock the bristles together and everything like that or you can just mix and match you know what i'm saying but i just wanted to give you guys a little bit more details in regards to how i store my brushes because it's not just about hanging it up but you also don't want your bristles to get messed up all right so with that being said hopefully it'll help you guys be able to find the exact brush holder that i have if you want but at the end of the day i'm gonna also have something coming in the future because i know that there's a lot of dedicated waivers out there you know what i'm saying when it comes to buying all these brushes you need a place to be able to store your brush this allows you to be able to store it within the bathroom but like i said sometimes you got to be careful about doing that because whenever you are taking a shower and all of the mist and the steam from the shower gets into the bathroom it can affect the paint on your brushes you know what i'm saying i'll make sure i link the video right above here that i did to be able to go into more detail about that but for me y'all know your boy jay lou i always got something special planned for you guys so y'all just be on the lookout for the future with that being said if you have any comments or questions make sure you leave them down in the comment section below regarding this brush if you guys don't make sure you leave a like on the video that definitely helps my channel and i appreciate all the support that you guys have shown me so far hope you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend it's your boy jay lou salute come bristle me Hey, do what I do. Lou is the name. I'm so off the chain. Torino is the brush. Do wet wood grain. Brush a wave, I have some. Brush a wave, I have some. Brush a wave, I have some. Brush a wave, I have some.